Just like our kids, we get concerned about our pets and we don't want any harm to come to them, whether it be from bacteria, disease, fungus, anything that could possibly compromise them, we worry about. But a very important lesson from biology teaches us that our immune systems need to work to be at its top peak performance. We need to fight off diseases and fight off bacteria, viruses, whatever, in order to keep our immune system at its best. So what we're gonna talk about today is how us reptile keepers, us hobbyists, keep our reptile, the sanitation practices we employ, and how they might actually be bad for our reptiles and go against what biology teaches us when it comes to our immune systems. Now, if you saw my first ever video, it was on how you can sanitize your wood, sanitize, it's not really a sanitation practice, but how you can prepare your wood for an enclosure without going through all those insane, in my mind, sanitation steps that people take. Now while being a good performer overall it actually still gets a decent amount of views today there is some controversy with that. It does have a pretty high like to dislike ratio. It's in the high 80 percent. But there is definitely a mix of feedback in the comments and usually videos where a lot of people agree are in the high 90%. So there's definitely people who disagree with this. And I've had conversations related to this for disagreements about disagreements on Facebook groups and such like that. But what I talk about, the main theme of that video is how my sanitation practice in quotes, is just spraying down the wood very thoroughly, a piece of wood I got from a safe place outdoors, and then letting it sit out in the sun for a few days, and then popping that in the enclosure. A lot of keepers do it this way. A lot of reputable, reputable keepers like Ty Bark do it this way. A lot of keepers who keep their reptiles outdoors do it this way. It's not uncommon. But there is definitely a group, and I would actually say a quite more popular group than those who just spray down and pop wood in their enclosures, that insist on baking the wood insist on possibly using damaging chemicals like bleach that could actually in turn harm your reptile. There are many other solutions out there that people employ. There's vinegar solutions. There's a bunch of different stuff and I'm not really going to talk about each of those solutions in depth and whether they're good or not good solutions. We're not going to talk about that in this video. What we're going to talk about is purely that biology standpoint of how you want to include some potential hazards in their environment to keep their immune system at their peak. And I do just want to clarify, I don't mean to say all of these sanitation methods are bad, that they're all dangerous or anything. Some of them probably work and there's probably some cases where you want to use them if you're using something sketchy from an area outdoors or, you know, there's, there's reasons. I'm not saying anybody who employs any of these strategies to sanitize something for the reptile enclosure is doing something bad. That's not true. That's not what I'm trying to claim here. Speaking of bad sanitation, if you don't subscribe, I will never shower again. And I know you guys can't smell me, but when I see you at a convention, oh, you're gonna regret it. So make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell as well so you're notified with all the latest updates. Let's get on with the video. What I'm purely trying to claim is we don't want to purify their enclosures. That's what it comes down to. Everything that passes through you into their enclosure does not need to go through a sanitization step. I also want to add, and you guys probably know this already, that this is not a scientifically proven or theorized in an evidence-based study concept that I'm talking about here in terms of saying that reptiles that have a more sanitized environment in captivity usually are more prone to disease and such like that. This is just something I really kind of thought of and I've, I've heard other keepers think of. I'm not trying to claim this as an original idea, but just something that I've thought of with all this sanitation stuff that I think from our lessons that biology teaches us, which I've said 5,000 times already this video, that could be concerning and that definitely makes sense and applies to cases like this. So we know going further into this, if you take taken any biology course that we have antibodies, white blood cells, and all animals have some form, some type of defense system, something to fight against an intruding bacteria, virus, something that does not belong in their body. And these systems, if not challenged, they can get complacent in a way. And that is bad. We need them to be alert and ready. And that's why in a lot of cases, human-based whatever, 
immune systems that aren't challenged, that stay away from dangerous things all the time, usually when something breaks through the barrier, your defense system is not as prepared and you get a lot sicker than you normally would in normal circumstances. And that's a concern I have about my reptiles is that I know that I could be causing a potential issue with how I prepare putting wood in and that, you know, this, instead of very much focusing on sanitization and making sure it's very clean, I could be compromising something and there's always a risk to that. But I also know I can't control everything and no matter what I do, how sanitized I keep the enclosure, there's always a risk for something to get in there, some bacteria, some fungi, and infect the reptile, hurt the reptile, and I want the reptile's own system, own body to be prepared for that and be able to fight it off. I don't wanna take the place of my reptile's immune system, if that makes sense. So to clarify, I definitely agree that washing down, soaking up in the sun, popping in enclosure, that's not as sanitary as some of these methods. And I, I said earlier that I'm not saying these methods are all bad, although some of them like the bleach method, I'm not a fan of, but I'm not saying they're necessarily bad and don't accomplish their job and aren't safe and stuff like that. I'm just saying I'd rather take the risk of not fully sanitizing an enclosure and then some bacteria or fungi getting in infecting the reptile and them having a compromised immune system a lot easier than if I readily in introduced some casual bacteria and stuff that could keep their immune system going at a peak level and being challenged. Like most things though, there is a risk. I don't want to downplay that. You can bring harm potentially to your reptile by not fully doing sanitization. I don't know, it's a very fine line. Like I totally acknowledge the reason you might want to be more sanitary. And I, I think this spray down soak in the sun is a good compromise there. And you guys also have to know that these reptiles, they, they were born for the wild. They were born to exist out in nature and have the ability to survive. So it's not like they're these fragile little animals. And they, they're actually quite good at hiding their sicknesses and recovering on their own. They're very hardy animals. There's also a couple slightly beneficial things from grabbing outdoor wood and not fully sanitizing it. You can introduce some natural isopods to help cycle the soil in a bioactive enclosure. We all know how expensive isopods can be getting online and such like that. Speaking of expensive, wood in an enclosure that you get online is pretty darn expensive for a piece of wood. So, you know, I'm not saying you should ever put money before your reptile's health, but you can't deny that that's a benefit. In conclusion, to sort of formalize my theory in one coherent thought, I believe that it's worth taking the risk of not fully sanitizing everything that goes in the reptile's enclosure in order to keep their immune system at peak performance and not have it get lazy and ill-prepared even for the slightest bacteria that gets in because that will lower the threshold that the body's ready for, the reptile's body is ready for, and even the most regular of bacteria can cause something very bad and hazardous. And despite me not wanting to get into each and every sanitation method out there, there are some pretty bad ones. And not everybody I think out there who does one of these really thinks through what potential hazards you may be introducing by sanitizing. You may be trading one bad thing for another. So let me know what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you believe that it's important to let a reptile's immune system do its job and deal with these bacteria? Now, I'm not saying go ahead and introduce bacteria and fungi and stuff like that purposefully. If it comes along with the wood, though, I don't think it's the end of the world if it comes along with something you put in the enclosure. But do you think that's a good idea? Or do you act more so as your reptile's immune system and defenses and take the road of sanitizing a lot of things frequently changing out the substrate, stuff like that. Do you take that seriously? Additionally, give reasons why. Let me know why you think one way or the other. Unlike some of the other previous opinion videos I did, this way I'm kind of, I, I see benefits of both, but there's one that i rather take the risk on. So like I said, let me know. I would be very interested to hear everybody's thoughts and then help round out my opinion a little bit more so. But that's this video today. Let me know if you enjoyed the discussion. Couple quick announcements. Thanks to all the patrons. Smoothcat, Herb M, David T, Angela L, Houston H. Thank you so much for supporting the Patreon. I really 
really appreciate it. You guys, too, could support the Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. Check the top right for more information. It's a rainy day out. I don't know if you can see the rain behind me. I'm under an umbrella. But what's cheering me up today is my nice Max t-shirt. If you guys are interested in some cool reptile merch, there will be four designs in the top right to the left of my head. I hope I said that right. If you're into one of those designs, good news. All profit I'm making over the next week from merch is going to US Arc Florida to help fight SB 1414. They're doing a lawsuit and I will be putting the same amount up that I make in sales from my own personal bag. So definitely a good time to buy some merch. Merch is in the description, by the way. Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Remember, guys, these videos, they're my opinion, but they're also to start a discussion. It doesn't need to be anything too outrageous. All right, guys, like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you guys next week.